It's Monday, February 12th, 2024, and I'm Dave Sobel. Three things to know today. Volt Typhoon's five-year breach of U.S. systems signals a new era of cyber threats from China. Consulting opportunities emerge as businesses seek compliance with evolving AI regulations and digital laws, and the industry titans that are betting on Ninja One. Insight into the $1.9 billion valuation and strategic investments from Snowflake and Datadog executives. This is the business of tech. With as many breaches and security concerns as I report in this show, it should be obvious that cybersecurity is not just about technology, but also the human expertise needed to interpret and respond to complex threats. Huntress is focused on elevating SMBs and MSPs around the world. Huntress has a suite of fully managed cybersecurity solutions powered by a 24 by 7 human-led SOC dedicated to continuous monitoring, expert investigation, and rapid response. And the proof is the execution. Huntress is the number one rated EDR for SMBs on G2. Want to know more about the platform? Visit Huntress.com slash MSP Radio to learn more. Let's kick off the week with a big warning. China-backed hackers have had access to major U.S. critical infrastructure for at least five years, according to an intelligence advisory. The hacking group, known as Volt Typhoon, has exploited vulnerabilities in routers, firewalls, and VPNs to target water, transportation, energy, and communication systems. The advisory warns of the group's ability to disrupt critical energy and water controls. It highlights concerns about potential cyber attacks in the lead-up to a possible Chinese invasion of Taiwan. This represents a shift from traditional Chinese hacking as Volt Typhoon focuses on destructive cyber attacks. And I'm putting this in the security block today. The U.S. will restrict visas for individuals involved in the misuse of commercial spyware, targeting those who facilitate or benefit financially from such misuse. The policy will also apply to spouses and children of those involved. The U.S. aims to address the growing misuse of spyware worldwide, which threatens privacy, human rights, and security. The visa ban is related to a previous executive order restricting U.S. government agencies from using commercial spyware. The U.S. does not have a predetermined list of individuals and will handle cases individually. The policy's applicability to individuals from the EU and Israel is uncertain. Several countries, including U.S. allies, have been accused of using spyware against political opponents and journalists. The new visa restriction is part of the U.S. administration's efforts to combat the misuse of commercial spyware and promote accountability. Why do we care? Five years. Let that sink in. That's a significant escalation in cyber threats. And while slow, there are proving to be real-world consequences. By targeting those who facilitate or benefit from the misuse of spyware, the U.S. aims to promote accountability and deter those nefarious activities facilitated by the technologies. The policy may restrain relations with countries, including some allies. It shows a willingness to take that on. Which leads me to the legislative block. The Federal Communications Commission has banned using artificial intelligence to generate robocalls with cloned human voices. This ruling extends the restrictions of the Telephone Consumer Protection Act to include AI technologies capable of generating human voices. State attorneys general can now take legal action against those responsible for illegal robocalls the ruling coincides with the 2024 presidential election, emphasizing the need to protect the integrity of the electoral process. The bipartisan unanimous decision comes after a bipartisan coalition of 26 state attorneys general urged the FCC to restrict the use of AI in telemarketing. Violators of the rule could face fines of up to $23,000 per call, and recipients of scam calls have the right to take legal action and potentially recover up to $1,500 for each unwanted call. But only some have moved. The UK government, AI companies, and creative organizations have failed to reach a consensus on a proposed code for training AI models on copyrighted material. 
This setback is a blow to artists and professionals who fear their work will be copied without credit or payment. The breakdown in talks means that definitive policies on UK AI copyright are unlikely to be set anytime soon. Speaking of Europe, the circulation of AI-generated deepfake images of Taylor Swift has prompted calls for legislation in the United States and raised concerns in the European Union. European Commission Vice President Vera Jourova highlighted the potential harm caused by deepfakes and called for stronger laws to protect victims. The EU has proposed a law to combat online abuse against women, including the non-consensual sharing of intimate images. The Digital Services Act aims to hold social media platforms accountable for swiftly removing illegal content. The final deal also criminalizes the unsolicited sharing of sexually explicit material. Why do we care? Companies leveraging AI for customer outreach must rigorously ensure their practices comply with evolving regulations, prioritizing transparency and consent in their strategies. This is a consulting opportunity, of course. And the space won't be smooth sailing. See the UK for the pitfalls to come. However, the chaos points to a broader trend toward more stringent regulation of AI technologies. And I have some news on MSP Tools today. Ninja One, a company that provides an IT management platform, has raised $231.5 million in a Series C funding round led by Iconic Growth, bringing its valuation to $1.9 billion. The platform offers visibility and management tools for endpoints, automating authentication, monitoring, and patching to ensure security. With over 17,000 customers and 7 million endpoints under its management, Ninja One's platform is used by large-scale customers such as HelloFresh, Nissan, and the University of Oxford. And Jay McBain from Canalis noted, quote, The valuation on current revenue to $1.9 billion is astronomical. The detail that isn't being talked about is why Frank Stuhlman won Jay McBain from Canalis noted, quote, the valuation on current revenue to $1.9 billion is astronomical. The detail that isn't being talked about is why Frank Slootman at $3.6 billion net worth from Snowflake and Amit Agrawal from Datadog would buy into the round. These two companies have a combined valuation of $116.5 billion and are on the forefront of the generative AI revolution. Ninja One is growing at 70% plus, serving a total addressable market of over 335,000 managed services providers who delivered $488 billion last year in revenue. Betting on the fourth place by market share platform company in a fast-growing market is one thing, uh, referencing HubSpot, but another more important detail is the massive data lake that is being created across Ninja One's 17,000 customers and 7 million endpoints. End quote. And I almost missed this, so props to Rich Freeman at Channel Hauling. ConnectWise appointed Greg Lau as Senior Vice President and General Manager of IT Nation, a new business unit focused on global partner growth and success and community. I'll highlight his take on Automation Nation 2, noting ConnectWise is urging MSPs to adopt AI and RPA technologies faster, emphasizing the first mover advantage. They are committed to maintaining security and responsible AI while continuing to develop features that combine AI and RPA for more automated actions. Why do we care? Ninja One is in the big leagues now with that size and scale. They're not a scrappy upstart. Note that insight. What combination of data and AI will be coming to Ninja One? The emphasis on data capabilities points to a growing trend in MSP tools toward utilizing data analytics and AI for enhanced endpoint management and security. Second, I wanted to call out something. When creating a business unit, it then operates with its own objectives, strategies, and often a dedicated team, while still aligning with the overall missions and goals of the broader organization. They typically have their own financial statements and performance metrics, enabling targeted management decisions and accountability. Thus, Expect that ConnectWise is now measuring those investments specifically. Today's episode is supported by CoreView. 
Your customers need your Microsoft 365 expertise, and CoreView has the only M365 management platform designed for MSPs. Manage hundreds of tenants, automate manual tasks, and monitor compliance, all while intelligently comparing to the baseline. With a no-code control approach, CoreView revolutionizes your Microsoft 365 administration. This powerful platform enables automatic reporting and remediation, ensuring optimal performance and security. The best part? You achieve this high level of service without the need for a large workforce, allowing you to focus on growing your business through efficiency. Want to know more? Visit coreview.com slash MSP and find out more. Thanks for listening. Today is National Clean Out Your Computer Day. It's a good day to do that. Have a question you want answered? We're taking listener questions. Send them, ideally as a voice memo or video, to question at mspradio.com. I'll be answering listener questions live starting next week. And if you want to comment on a story, make sure to put it in the comments if you're on YouTube or reach out on LinkedIn if you're listening to the podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, give it a review and make sure you subscribed or followed on your favorite platform. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. The Business of Tech is written and produced by me, Dave Sobel, under ethics guidelines, posted at businessof.tech. If you like the content, please make sure to hit that like button and follow or subscribe. It's free and easy and the best way to support the show and help us grow. You can also check out our Patreon, where you can join the Business of Tech community at patreon.com slash MSP radio or buy our Why Do We Care merch at businessof.tech. Finally, if you're interested in advertising on the show, visit mspradio.com slash engage. Once again, thanks for listening to me. And I will talk to you again on our next episode of the Business of Tech. Part of the MSP Radio Network.